So New England Yearly Meeting several years ago uh, proved a minute saying that we were committing as a whole body to challenging white supremacy. And I've been hearing these different, these different calls to challenge white supremacy, to address climate change, to begin the work of reparations and apology as all part of a greater whole. But a lot of times I think we think of racial justice as this thing and climate change as this thing. And maybe those of us who aren't native are paying attention to native issues or not. But to me, they're all about how is God calling us to live into relationship with each other. And I wanted to pull them together so that we weren't seeing them as separate things, but part of the greater healing work and justice work we're called to right now. And when I thought about what's at the core of all of these different issues, to me, what it is is separation. And so how do we start to heal that? And so I put together a workshop called uh, responding to the call, healing the sin of separation. That was a chance for friends from throughout New England. And we had friends from other yearly meetings join us, begin to look at how are these different issues intersecting and how can learning about one help us better move in the other. And underneath all of that, how do we start to do the reconnecting work we have to do to really get into a space of healing and justice. Of course, in a time of pandemic, we couldn't gather in person. So we would meet on Zoom uh, every other week as a, as a bigger group and a smaller um, anchor groups would meet um, every other week in between the larger meetings. And so there was an opportunity to um, engage with the work on a personal level, um, on a small group level and a, in a large group level. In terms of structure, it, it followed, I think, kind of a, a similar pattern most weeks of um, opening up with some sort of multimodal, usually a video, music video, um, something like that, that just brought people together and was about kind of previewing what we were hoping to focus on during the evening. Then we'd go into, I guess, what I think of as like the, the lesson of the day almost. Um, and we usually had some sort of framework um, and coupled with usually a uh, like a personal anecdote from one of the facilitators to help explain that and give um, meaning and real life example to what we were framing for people. And for us, our role was to usher people in in a safe space where they can engage with the material at a, at a level that was comfortable for them. That is the story of sort of how it just moved through us. I think it just became clear that this is a way that people can connect. This is a way that they can kind of, in this wild time where we're all wrestling with so much and there's so much collective trauma happening, how we can create a space that's flexible to have these conversations. And so one of the coolest parts of this course is that there's every other week um, opportunities for small groups to meet. And we actually just had kind of a reunion with some of the participants and a lot of them are still meeting with those small groups now three or four months out, which they said has been sort of their saving grace. Once all of this starts to be opened up to them, they see all of these patterns and they, they start to see how everything's connected and to have a group of people who went through the responding to the call, healing the sin of separation course together to continue having those conversations has like, allowed all of these different gifts to start to fruit um, around New England, which I think is a really beautiful thing. Healing from the sin of separation as a workshop and as a course uh, supported by the Beacon Hill Friends House, um, you know, is one event. What would be so lovely is to see this um, work being done all around um, Quaker communities. We created this large Google Classroom 
where there were many, many different resources that we had had pulled from the internet, either resources that were free or resources where I contacted the author and got their permission to use it. We've got that Google Classroom up and available. If people are interested in accessing those resources, um, they can contact me at lisa at nym.org and we can share those resources. We also recorded parts of the session where we were teaching a framework or leading a different practice that are available. And so while anyone logging on won't get the full experience of the course, all the kind of components and pieces are there that anyone is welcome to use. As friends institutions, the more that we, I think, can create resources for meetings or groups of people who want to engage in this work public, like publicly available and communicate that openly can be of use to our society. And so what are the ways that we can partner together to take on big topics and challenging queries and like call each other into greater faithfulness. Thanks for watching this Quaker Speak video. We release a new video every other Thursday. We'd like to thank Beacon Hill Friends House for sponsoring us on this one. Beacon Hill Friends House is an independent Quaker nonprofit organization that hosts online, hybrid, and in-person programming, providing opportunities for spiritual deepening, personal growth, and collective action. The Friends House also serves as home to a residential community, overnight guest accommodations, and Beacon Hill Friends Meeting, an inclusive Quaker congregation. You can find more information, along with edited recordings of past programs, at www.bhfh.org. Thanks again for watching and have a happy Thursday.